heartburn, stress, and gut imbalance, the link explained. If you suffer from acid reflux, if you have gas, bloating, indigestion, you have gut pain, you're under stress, what comes first? How, how did it all start? And how do you kind of untangle it? it? It turns out that there's a bit of a vicious feedback loop amongst all of these things. So I want to tease it out for you so you really understand the mechanism and how it happens and of course what you can do about it. So uh, starting with GERD or acid reflux, typically people who suffer from acid reflux, heartburn, they're on an acid suppressing drug like a proton pump inhibitor. And what you, you get when you reduce acid is you get the ability of unfortunately bad bacteria to procreate, to reproduce. And what happens with these bad bacteria is they then suppress the good bacteria. So good bacteria produce something called short chain fatty acids. It's not important that you remember that, but it is important that you remember what they do. So they feed the cells in your colon, keeping them healthy. They prevent leaky gut from occurring. They strengthen uh, your immune system. They regulate your metabolism so you're of a good weight and they uh, support cognitive function and mood. So these good bacteria do a tremendous amount for you. And unfortunately, when you're on an acid suppressing drug, they are compromised in their ability to not just do their job, but they can't do their job because they're not present. So you have too many bad bacteria and not enough good bacteria. Okay, so also when acid comes up into your esophagus, that causes inflammation, of course, because acid is not designed to go up your esophagus. When that occurs, it triggers a release of what's called inflammatory uh, chemicals, and they get into your bloodstream and they cause inflammation throughout your body. So not only is that moving you toward a lot of the diseases that Americans are suffering from, like heart disease and diabetes and autoimmune disease and cognitive decline, uh, but it's also moving you toward gut imbalance. So as soon as you have these inflammatory chemicals going throughout your system, you're moving yourself toward many different diseases, but gut imbalance is one of them. Where stress falls into it is that GERD symptoms, so the symptoms of uh, the burning, the choking on the acid, the tasting the acid, uh, all that goes with having acid reflux, those symptoms stimulate a part of your nervous system called your sympathetic nervous system. And because this is a, now sympathetic is, it can be fun, it's fight or flight, you're all energized, that's the good side of it, but it's also, there's the stress side of it. So your body's under stress, this acid is going up into your esophagus, you secrete a, a stress hormone called cortisol. And what that does, in addition to making you feel stressed, is it alters your gut function. So here we have stress being linked to altering your gut function. And it reduces motility, meaning how fast food is moving through your gut. So you're more likely to get small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You're more likely to get more bad bacteria being produced. You're more likely to get constipation. So that's what slowed motility does. Also, you're more likely to get leaky gut and it, it shifts you into this pro-inflammatory state. We were mentioning earlier all the diseases associated with systemic or body-wide inflammation. So stress is moving you toward that. And you know, you've, you've heard the, maybe the gut brain connection. That's what it's talking about. Or, you know, stress can kill you. That's what it's talking about. Stress is not just, you know, how we're thinking and feeling. It has systemic changes. Okay. So what happens when we have now, let's shift into the gut imbalance side of the equation. So we've got this gut imbalance. What's, what's that doing? It's increasing pressure, um, and, and it increases gas. So now that pressure and gas pushes on your stomach, the stomach gets squeezed and acid moves up into the esophagus. So uh, that's how the gut imbalance is creating the acid reflux. It also, uh, having this bad bacteria or gut imbalance, it's also known as dysbiosis, it shifts how uh, your bile from your gallbladder is broken down and metabolized and it shifts you into having more what's called secondary bile acids and they injure the esophagus 
uh, more than normal bile acids would. Bile should never be coming up into your esophagus, but um, with dysbiosis, you have more of these secondary bile acids. They're more injurious to your esophagus and your lower esophage esophageal sphincter, which is just a valve that opens and closes when food and drink is passing. Uh, but what happens with acid reflux is, is it gets too kind of loose and floppy, and, and it's not protecting you against reflux, which is what it should do. It should close and with a nice downward pressure so things can't come up the other way. Also, you get less of our friends, the short chain fatty acids. And I mentioned a lot of the good things that they do, but they also alter the tone and function of your vagus nerve. So that leads to the slowered motility and sphincters that are not kind of pressurized and keeping everything moving from up down instead of down up. And also being um, having poor vagal tone is associated with stress. So you're starting to see how these all fit together. And last but not least, with this dysbiosis, your uh, the sensory changes. So this is harkening back to the nervous system again. You're more likely to feel pain uh, more robustly than is necessarily warranted. It's not that you're not feeling the pain, you absolutely are. But if we look at sort of how much acid, this is looking at uh, reflux and, and the burn and the discomfort that you feel throughout your gut, not just your esophagus, but throughout your gut, the nerves are just more sensitized. I, I liken it to a, a bad sunburn if you've ever had one. If, if everything hurts, even air, you know, <laughs> blowing past your skin hurts because the nerves are hypersensitized. So you can see that it's having acid reflux leads to gut imbalance and stress. Having gut imbalance leads to acid reflux and stress. So it, it's quite the vicious cycle, and this is proven by um, the research that I'm going to have attached to the explanation of this video. Uh, but you know, now what do you do? Here at my clinic, we like to address all all of those things because sometimes people say, "Well, I'll just." you know, I'll just get on a probiotic. Uh, okay, but which probiotic? You know, we like to test to see exactly what kind of uh, bacteria you need. Like what are the good guys you need, but then what are the bad guys that maybe need to be annihilated? And doing that one thing, and, and I believe me, I understand the viewpoint of wanting one thing. It's, it's a very legitimate question. But if you're doing one thing for this uh, dysbiosis in your colon, the, too many bad bacteria, and you're trying to just you know, put in some good bacteria. Okay, for one person that might work, but it's it's not handling all these other factors. So because it's a cycle and they just, it's a feedback loop that just keeps feeding forward, 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 forward. We have to break the cycle by, by addressing all the factors. So that's including whether you're under a lot of stress or is the stress a byproduct of what's happening in the gut, then we're addressing the acid reflux, we're addressing the gut imbalance, and we're doing both ends against the middle so that we can stop this, this uh, feedback loop. So hopefully that makes sense. The exciting thing is it's a natural protocol, it's not drugs or surgery, and if you're on a PPI and you're worried about getting off of it, you know, we just need to know more about you and, and, and help you in that direction. Uh, but it's a case-by-case -case basis. So I hope you enjoyed this video, that you got something out of it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel so you can hear more, and um, send me a comment. I love your comments. I answer pretty much everyone, and we'll talk soon.